Jesus is just all right with me. Jesus is just all right, oh yeah. Jesus is just all right with me. Jesus is just all right. I don't care what they may say. I don't care what they may do. I don't care what they may say. Jesus is just all right. Whether you're here in the vineyard or connecting through your mobile device, we are so happy you're with us today to celebrate Father's Day and honor all the fathers, all the father figures, fathers in heaven, and our heavenly father. And despite what the first song said, we know that Jesus is more than just all right because his grace is amazing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found.
the sound is sweet and his grace is amazing and no matter what troubles you're going through in life our father invites us to come as you are come out of sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let the rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come near. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burden. Lay down your shame All who are broken Lift up your faith O oh, wanderer, come home You're not too far So lay down your hurt Lay down Sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can cure. Lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. Lay down your 
please be seated for a time of prayer. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, all glory belongs to you. We come to you in prayer to glorify your name, not because of what we do, but because of who you are. We adore you for being our Abba Father. Your unconditional love for us stretches to the highest mountain peaks and reaches to the depths of the seas. It's beyond anything we can fathom. Your love never ends, and great is your faithfulness. You deserve all the glory, honor, and praise we can offer. Forgive us any prideful thoughts that would bring glory upon ourselves. Instead of relying on our own abilities, we choose to praise you and acknowledge that you have everything working for our good. Because of your mercy and amazing grace, you sent your son Jesus as a sacrifice for our sins. As a father, you demonstrated a love unlike anything this world has to offer. Because of that love, we will get to spend eternity with you. Lord, thank you for this ultimate gift. Without you, we would have no hope. We love you with all our heart, soul, and mind. Thank you for your faithfulness that endures forever. And now we come to you with the prayers of your people here at Woodside. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Hear us, Lord, as we pray together the prayer which Jesus taught his disciples, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand. Put your hands together. Come on. Let's do it. That's it. I can't count the times I've called your name some broken night. And you showed up and patched me up like you do every time I get amnesia. I forget that you keep coming around There ain't no way you'd ever let me down Good God Almighty I hope you'll find me Praising your name no matter what comes Cause I know where I'd be Without your mercy So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs 
Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. You say your love goes on forever, that your mercy never stops. So why would I assume you'd be somebody that you're not like the sun in the morning? I know you're going to be there every day. So what on earth could make me be afraid? Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praising your name no matter what comes. Because I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my good he's good tell me is he god he's god he is good god almighty praise him in the morning praise him in the noontime praise him when the sun goes down love him in the morning love him in the noontime love him when the sun goes down good god almighty i hope you'll find me praise your name Good. He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Welcome to Woodside on this beautiful Father's Day. Please turn and greet your neighbor. Great to see everybody here. So grateful that we could celebrate all the men in our lives. And the yeah, thank you. Did you know that 11% of Woodside's total budget goes to supporting missions? Bob, can you just count me to ten? Just Woodside can reach out. In thank you. Hey, welcome everybody. Would you take a moment and pull out the connection card which you received when you came in here? Grab a pen. Should be on the table in front of you. And then just fill out, put in your name, email address, and any other information you'd like to share with us on this Father's Day. Uh, we do celebrate all the men in our lives on this day and are grateful for Gary Lasasso, who will be bringing his testimony of faith and how God has raised his uh, faith and walk with him through all of you and through many others. So I'd ask you to just look at that uh, information that you received. Place your connection card, your offer in the basket during our final song. Here are some other things that are happening at Woodside. Check this out. Did you know that 11% of Woodside's total budget goes to supporting missions? Because of your generosity, Woodside can reach out in Jesus' name to orphanages in Africa, house the homeless on winter nights with Code Blue, and build Habitat for Humanity houses right in our parking lot. Recurring giving is easy to set up and helps Woodside continue to support our many missions and ministries consistently, especially over the summer. You can set up recurring giving a variety of ways, with your bank using BillPay, through the website on the Give page, or through the Woodside app's Give Tile. If you'd like help setting up a recurring gift, let us know on the connection card. For every new recurring gift set up, Woodside will donate $5 to the Morrisville Food Pantry. Consider setting up a recurring gift today. The lazy days of summer are great for rest and relaxation. They're also the perfect time to reconnect with God. This summer, escape to Woodside each Sunday, beginning June 26th, with our new message series, Summer Getaways. We'll head up to the mountains and down the shore with God's great saints in scripture. Let the Lord use these weekly retreats to refresh and renew you. Want to learn more about discipleship? 
Looking to join a growth group? Join Meg Smith, Director of Discipleship, for Coffee and Donuts, Sunday, June 26th. Stop in before or after the morning services between 8.30 and 12.30 in room 101 near the sanctuary. Come chat with current growth group coaches and leaders about leading or joining a growth group. Also on June 26th is the return of KWAN, Woodside Sunday Morning Kids with a Mission program for preschoolers through fifth grade. It's offered at 9 a.m. and no registration is required. Woodside committed to supporting Urban Promise Trenton's camp the week of June 26th through 29th by providing healthy snacks for 70 campers each day of the week. You can find information about this and other ways to volunteer with one of Woodside's many food ministries, like dinner ministry or coffee hour, on the Woodside website under Serve. On Sunday, July 3rd, in honor of Independence Day, Woodside will offer one service at 10 a.m. outdoors, weather permitting. If weather doesn't permit, we'll move indoors to the vineyard. Either way, come ready to celebrate the Lord. Those are today's announcements. Be sure to check your email, the app, the website, and follow Woodside on social media to stay up to date with all that's happening here. If you filled out a paper connection card, drop that along with your offering envelope in the basket when it's passed during the final song. Now, let's continue worshiping God. Good morning. How about that band, right? Right? Awesome. It's amazing how much energy um, they have, and I'm sorry I didn't wear my sunglasses this morning. I, I didn't get the memo. Um, you know, looking out at everyone today reminds me of something the Reverend Bob Richards once said when he said, the Lord must have loved ordinary people because he made so many of us. But then he said, every single day and in every walk of life, Ordinary people accomplish extraordinary things. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Gary Lasasso. And for those of you who do know, my, do know me, I know exactly what you're thinking, and I'm not exactly sure why I'm up here either. Hopefully the next few minutes we can figure, out, figure that out together. I am truly honored and blessed to share my personal testimony with you today. And I'm beyond humbled to be among so many ordinary people. This place, this family, this body of Christ has accomplished so many extraordinary things. Our daughter Ava's favorite verse is Jeremiah 29, 11, And she read it recently at my dad's funeral. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Another important passage for me comes from the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew 5, uh, verses 13 through 16, Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. God's plan is to give us hope in these troubled times. God's plan is for us to sprinkle his salt and add flavor and seasoning to people's lives, and God's plan is to, for us to bring his light to people, to help their fi find their way out of the darkness. On this day, I'd like to wish all fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, my father-in-law Skip, a happy Father's Day. I'm the proud father of Ava Lasasso. Hearing Ava sing and give praise to God so many years in this very building is always very special and emotional to me. There's nothing she loves more than God, her family, and her friends. Being her dad is truly the most rewarding part of my life. I've learned so much about compassion and empathy from Ava, and I love you for that, and for so many other reasons. And I think we both learned compassion and empathy from her mother, my wife Dawn. She's the most beautiful woman in the world to me, both inside and out. Dawn, my story and testimony is only worth telling because you're part of it. Because you're my wife and what I've become because of you. Thank you. 
For me, this is a, a bittersweet day and an emotional day for another reason. This is the first Father's Day I will not be able to celebrate with my dad. Last October 6th, my father passed away due to complications from Parkinson's disease. My dad was my hero. I'm proud of his life as a as service, his life of service as a New Jersey State Trooper. I'm also blessed that my dad was present in my life and that he cared. He never missed one of my baseball games or sporting events, and he always told me growing up, have fun and do the best you can. It's not just true in sports, it's, it's true in life, really. You know, my Heavenly Father also gave me some great advice, as I read earlier in Jeremiah 29, 11, where it says, God's plan is to give you hope. But hope, when we use it, is usually defined as a wish. I hope I'm going to get a promotion or a new job, or I hope that I'm going to get a good grade on a test, or I get accepted to the college I want to, I want to go to. I hope that Rutgers beats Michigan this fall. <laughs> I hope this recent Phillies winning streak continues, right? It's giving us all hope that they'll make the playoffs. But God's hope's different. God's hope is not a wish, or in the case of the Phillies or Rutgers beating Michigan, a fantasy. God's hope is a guarantee. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Biblical hope is a certainty. It's having confidence that God's plan is good. God's plan for me came together right here under this roof in Woodside. How many people have here been either a student or a parent of a student or a teacher at Woodside Christian Preschool? There's a, there's a few out there, right? Yeah. Well, that's exactly where our family's journey began to pick up back in uh, 2005. God sprinkled a little bit of salt and shined his light into our lives, and I can see today that that didn't by, happen by chance. It was car, part of God's plan. Ava was just three years old when she started here at Woodside. Here's a picture of, from 2008 with her, um, her pre-K class. And then here's a picture from last year, 2021, in that same pose in that very same room when they graduated high school last year. Back then, Dawn met another Woodside mom, Jennifer Ullman. Jen the Evangelist was probably Woodside's first sprinkle of salt from God's salt shaker in our lives. She simply invited Dawn and our family to attend a service here at Woodside. With a little warning, it's not the same church that we may be used to where we, where we grew up. Our pastor, she said, is actually part of the band. Band? Okay, there's a band. That was a little unusual growing up in a Catholic church. Our first time, or one of our first times, was a vacation Bible school Sunday with all of the songs and skits. In one of those skits, that guitar-playing pastor was sticking his arm in a toilet. Now, like you, I'm not exactly sure what scripture passage the arm in the toilet comes from. <laughs> but Doug, it worked. We were convinced that this was the place for us. Not only did we join Woodside, but for five years of my life, I became part of those very, very same VBS skits. I had so much fun with those skits myself. I wasn't sure if the kids were getting anything out of it, but I sure know I was. The second truly life-changing event at Woodside was participating in a growth group. So I want to try something here that um, Doug, Doug did way back when. If you're part of a growth group right now, please stand up for me. And stay standing. If you can't stand, just raise your hand. If you're ever part of one and you're not, please stand up. How about if you're part of the youth group? You can stand too. Youth group people, you guys can stand too. So. If you're still sitting, I know exactly how you feel, because that's what happened to me. My wife was standing next to me, and I grabbed her arm, and I said, sit down, sit down. She looked literally down at me, and she said, I'm part of a growth group, and you're not. 
So you can all sit down now. But putting it out a plug, grab the connection card. It'll be totally worth it if you join a growth group. <laughs> so Doug's recruitment tactic for that growth group was going to lead me to be blessed with spiritual salt and inspiring light that continues to this very day. Eventually, we became salt and light for others. At the end of that service, I got out of the sanctuary as quickly as I could. I told Dawn, I'll go get Ava. I was, qu frankly, quite a, quite a little bit embarrassed. Plus, I wanted to make sure Ava didn't get too many of those giant candy bars that her Sunday school teacher, Cliff Hutchins, used to ha ha hand out at the time. As I quickly walked to the classrooms, I stopped at the sign-up list for the growth groups. One stuck out to me. I saw the names Dan Regan and Ken Parker. I met Dan more than a decade earlier, in 1991. We were both young sales reps for a company, and he was my boss. I actually didn't realize Dan even went here. Ken lived in our neighborhood. So I thought, OK, at least I know some people. I'll sign up for that group. And boy, I'm glad I did. These guys inspired me to find a better version of myself. They drew me out of my comfort zone. In addition to Ken and, and Dan, it was John Hughes, I met Mike Gall, Bud Schofield, Cliff Hutchins, uh, Bill Pelosi, Jeff McKenzie, Jeff Hill, Wade Jacobson. I hope I got everybody. If I didn't, we'll edit it later. <laughs> it was through these men and this growth group that I was eventually introduced to Habitat for Humanity, the Woodside Dinner Ministry, Code Blue, Urban Promise, the Recovery Ministry. We built structures in the tent city in Bristol for our homeless neighbors. There were so many other things. All of these extraordinary service opportunities and a chance to shine God's light made possible by the ordinary men and women of Woodside. I also learned about mission trips. Each of these men in our group went on multiple mission trips. In fact, Ken Parker came up with this bright idea to bring the Woodside Senior High Youth Group to the Bahamas. But I drew the line there. Mission trips, yeah, sure, they sounded cool, but not for me. Nope, that's way too far out of my comfort zone and not part of my plan. Oh, but of course, God had other plans. In time, Dan Shaw took over as the leader of the Bahamas mission trip, and in 2019, Ava and I were on a plane heading to the Bahamas. Watching kids who I had known for years come out of their comfort zone, holding God's light high was inspirational and life-changing for me. I'm going to certainly forget a lot of people from the group, but I mean, I remember my roommates, Ben and Brandon, and, and Jacob and Adam on the roof, and uh, Jimmy Litley, and Jimmy actually brought some people from his school to us, so he was becoming an evangelist. There were girls spackling and building stucco walls, Tyler and Carissa and Katie. You know, unfortunately, due to COVID, that was the last um, opportunity to go to the Bahamas, and we... We hope that that changes soon because it truly is an amazing experience for not only the, the youth group, but for those of us who, who went um, as, as chaperones. Despite the hardships of COVID, our family life was going pretty well. Then things changed drastically in August of 2021 for me. Shortly after we dropped Ava off for her freshman year at Villanova, I was diagnosed with a very rare brain tumor called an acoustic neuroma. Part of me laughed at God's irony. I worked for more than 20 years for rare disease companies and helping to, in a small way, to help improve the lives of patients and caregivers with rare disease, and now I had one. Frankly, it was quite a miracle the tumor was even found. It turned out to be very large. My only symptom was a hearing loss in my right ear, and I was pretty shocked when I heard the diagnosis. So much so, I didn't tell anyone, not even Dawn. Keeping it to myself for a week or, or more and doing hours of research is, frankly, not a good strategy for how to deal with a scary situation, and I wouldn't recommend it. That fall, Dawn started as an assistant teacher at Woodside Christian Preschool, the place where God's plan began to unfold for us 15 years earlier. That was the same day I met my, with my neurosurgeon at Penn, he told me I needed surgery, a long one. He told me I would lose the hearing in my right ear and that there's a good chance I would have some facial paralysis for a few months, a few years, 
It's hard to tell. Everyone's different. That news was a bit worse than I expected. At the end of that appointment, I took a walk over to um, Washington Park in, near Independence Hall, and, and I cried. I talked to God, you know, the typical why me stuff. I felt pretty bad and pretty sorry for myself, and I was sitting there in my own world of darkness. At that point, a teacher had brought out a group of children, maybe about four years old, same age Ava was when she started here, and the same age as the kids that Dawn was teaching. But I, and I felt God's light through their smiles and through their laughter and through their running around. And so I felt pretty good. It was a roller coaster, though, and the roller coaster was just beginning. A couple of weeks after I learned that I would need this pretty major brain surgery, my father passed away. I was trying to keep a positive, positive attitude, but it was hard. It was a lot to deal with. In some ways, I really didn't deal with it at all. I had a hard time focusing on anything. I was half grieving my dad's passing. I was half dealing with my own health. Eventually, I had a conversation with my cousin Frank, who had lost his dad, my uncle, a year earlier. You know, he told me that it was time to focus on myself right now, that the time for grieving would come again, but, you know, really it was time to, you know, to start focusing, and I, and I think I did. I started to do the things that I needed to do to prepare, prepare for my surgery. I had a second opinion, which led me to Dr. Sisti at Columbia Presbyterian in New York. He was the doctor that ended up performing the surgery. I did physical therapy to improve my balance before surgery. I had more tests and MRIs. Um, from that point until my surgery on December 28th, I remained mainly positive and upbeat, mostly on the outside, though. There were some tough days, however, although I didn't admit it to anyone until after my surgery, I actually thought I was going to die. I prepared for it. I even wrote a letter to Dawn with specific details, including what readings and songs I wanted at my funeral. I was in a pretty dark place at points. The darkest was on December 28th, the morning of the surgery at 5.30 a.m. when we walked into the hospital. Because of COVID restrictions, there was a point there where I had to kind of be on my own. Um, Ava had to stay out into the lobby and Dawn was able to join me and then later I had to leave Dawn and I was, I was by myself. I hugged Ava and Dawn that morning truly believing that was my final I love you. But where there's darkness, there's light. Everything changed a couple of hours later when I was escorted into the surgical suite that morning. I truly felt God's presence. It's hard to explain, but I found a peace and a strength that I had never, ever felt in my entire life. At that very moment, I was certain that I was going to be okay of God's plan to prosper me and not to harm me. God gave me hope. About 12 hours later, I opened my eyes, and it was dawn. Oh, my wife dawn, not the time of day. So with dawn running the show at home and with Ava as her sidekick, my recovery actually went pretty smoothly. A few weeks of painkillers and steroids to reduce the swelling in my brain. How about that? They found a brain. <laughs> a lot of physical therapy to improve my balance, and listening to my wife was just the treatment to get me back to normal. While I did lose the hearing completely in my right ear, everything else came out pretty good. I truly feel blessed to be here today. I will have some follow-up MRIs to monitor what's left of the tumor and Maybe there'll be some treatment down the road, but it'll be minor to what, to what I already went through. You know, for so long, I always thought you had to do really big things, you know, to make a difference in this world. But God gives us ordinary people opportunities to accomplish extraordinary things every single day. And these little things can make a profound difference in people's lives. For me, one of those moments came earlier this year during my recovery on February 4th. 
That was the day Laura Cullen was diagnosed with that same rare disease and acoustic neuroma that I have. I didn't know Laura, but through a series of acquaintances which would make your head spin, including a connection right here at Woodside, God connected me with this lady from Long Island. Soon the salt and light which poured into our lives here at Woodside would touch her life. Two days after she received the news from the doctor, I was on the phone with Laura sharing my acoustic neuroma journey. I told her about my surgeon. I opened up about my fears, including that irrational belief that I was going to die. I shared what got me through the dark days, my wife and daughter, my faith in Jesus, the prayers from my friends and family, and my trust in God's plan. I read Jeremiah 29:11 to her. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Dawn and I talked and texted and FaceTimed with Laura and her husband, Michael, a lot over the next month. Even the night before her surgery, we talked and we prayed with them. Later on on Facebook, Laura said, it's very difficult to find positive information on this. I'm beyond fortunate that I was led to my new best friends. In our first text, Gary wrote, I know that the time right after the diagnosis is very scary, but know this, you are going to be okay. That was it, the game changer for me. He changed everything for me with those few words. I went from fear to hope. On March 2nd, Laura had a successful eight-hour surgery to remove most of her acoustic neuroma. During her surgery, her husband Michael texted Dawn and I and said, I'm not sure how you two made it through this without a you two in your lives. It was humbling to know that we made that much of an impact on another person. It happened because God gave us that opportunity to be his salt and his light. It was an emotional day for sure, a couple of hours later, on the same day of Laura's surgery, I was back here at Woodside for the very first time since my surgery. It was Ash Wednesday. I had a chance to tell Doug about my story and about Laura. And it was that day, that, in that time, that Pastor Doug invited me to give my testimony today. So God led an ordinary guy like me to do some extraordinary things with you, my Woodside family. God's plan brings hope. And I hope you join God's plan. Thank you. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you. Thank you for my daughter, Ava, who has brought so much joy to my life. I pray that you continue to bless others through her so that they see you through her life. I pray for my wife, Dawn. She has been a shining example of love for both me and Ava and also anyone she meets. I pray for my father. I was blessed to have him on this earth for 56 years of my life. Please take care of him until I see him later. I pray for my family who have been there with me through the darkness and the light. I pray for our Woodside family. There are so many points of light that come from this group of amazing people that shine your light in this world. And I pray this all in the name of the one who brings us all hope, your son and our late Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please stand and join us for our final song, Salt and Light. As the song proclaims, let your holy fire ignite. We love this song, and we're going to rock it. So please join us. Clap along, sing along, and join us as we praise God.
want to be like you. Your holiness I will pursue. I want the heart of Jesus. Show me the meaning of your grace. I want to, I want to give the world a taste of the love of Jesus. your holy fire ignite, reveal your glory in my life. I am not ashamed to lift up your holy name. Make me song, make me light. Set me as a city on a hill, a lamp on a stand. Hold me in your image, the work of your hand. Make me song, make me light, let your holy fire ignite. Feel your glory in my life. Yeah, yeah. Cause I am not ashamed to lift up your holy benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Make me song, make me light, let your holy fire ignite, reveal your glory in my life. to lift up your holy name. Make me salt, make me Father's Day. Have a great week.